Today's video, I want to get into the current mortgage rates throughout the United States. Could we hit 10% here, maybe? You know, it's getting a little wild out there. Go through that and uh, talk about inflation. You know, it's all transitory. Let's get into it. U.S. mortgage rates surged to the highest level in more than two years. Look at uh, this graph. And uh, we're, we're talking the highest since January 2020. Moving on, check out this. 30-year going to uh, above 4%, maybe 10%. Who knows? You know, I don't think we're there yet, but things are getting interesting. You know, as Bloomberg reported, mortgage rates uh, in the U.S. jumped to the highest level since uh, January 2020, before the pandemic rock uh, financial markets. Uh, the average for a 30-year loan was roughly nationally looking at all the rates, 3.69, up from 3.55 last week. Uh, you know, that's according to Freddie Mac. Uh, and according to the latest data Thursday released on uh, Thursday by Freddie Mac, the 30-year fixed rate average, you know, jumped to 3.69 percent seen over four percent with an average 0 0.8 points so just a little reminder a point is a fee paid to a lender equal to one percent of the loan amount so it is in addition to the interest rate so it was 3.55 percent a week ago and 2.73 percent a year ago the last time the 30-year fixed average was this high was january 2020 so when we kind of look at, you know, inflation, specifically wholesale inflation in the United States surged again last month, rising to 9.7% from a year earlier, you know, in a sign that price pressures remain high at all levels of the economy. So the Labor Department said on Tuesday that uh, its producer price index, you know, which measures uh, inflation before it reaches uh, consumers jumped 1% from December, and that's excluding volatile food as well as energy prices, folks. So whole, wholesale inflation rose 0.8% uh, from December and 8.3% uh, from January 2021. So last week, the government reported that inflation at a consumer level soared over the past year as at its highest rate in four decades four decades squeezy absolutely squeezing households wiping out uh, pay raises uh, we all talk about those wage increases doesn't mean anything reinforcing the federal reserve's decision to be decision you know to begin raising borrowing rates so the 7.5 percent price surge raged across the economy from food uh, to furniture uh, apartment rents, airline fees, electricity, appliances. I just had to buy appliances for a rental property. They've been delayed like four times and the price was a little higher. And then I got a wholesale account. So take a look at this chart showing 30 year at 4.456% and 15 year at 3.501%. So ladies and gentlemen, is the housing party, party starting to wind down? Builders are ramping up supply just as record low percentage of Americans say, you know, it's a good time to buy a home. They're putting the brakes on. And if we kind of look at millennials, I think millennials face yet another rug pull. As we all know, millennials are America's most economically cursed generation. Now that they're hitting their 30s and 40s, they're not even cool anymore, folks. And uh, the housing market might be about to uh, stick it to them once again. Uh, so we'll have to keep an eye on that. Um, you know, borrowing costs, when we, when we talk about borrowing costs, um, resume their upward climb after uh, holding relatively steady for about a month. Uh, they tracked uh, a surge in yields for 10-year treasuries, which uh, approached 2%. Uh, 
you know, stubbornly high inflation and unexpectedly strong jobs report. Yeah, right. The unexpectedly strong jobs report for January are likely to clear the way for the Federal Reserve to lift the benchmark interest rates, which may make mortgages more expensive. Absolutely 100%. So a lot of those jobs created part-time jobs, low-paying jobs. So while raising rates may discourage some buyers, they may spur others to jump into the market before costs get even greater. So with, you know, with home prices, you know, climbing and inventory at record lows, the challenge will be finding anything uh, affordable right now. And that's where your real estate professional comes into place. Uh, you got to be creative. So with inflation red hot, uh, you know, the Fed will be forced to act aggressively, according to some investment bankers. I've been on the phone with a few and the mortgage companies. So you're dealing with two runaway trains right now. Uh, and, you know, real estate prices are going crazy and rates are going crazy at the same time. So it does not, you know, bold well for, uh, you know, first time home buyers. If you buy, then you're probably going to have to compromise either by buying a smaller house or by stepping out of the market and waiting for things to uh, calm down a little bit. So, you know, even even without the rec re recent jump, mortgage payments, uh, you know, jump roughly 25.6% uh, of household incomes in the fourth quarter. The worst affordability rate in three years, uh, and that's data from the National Association of Realtors. So things are uh, starting to give me a little heartburn in certain respects. You know, at the current average for a 30-year loan, uh, the monthly payment on a $300,000 mortgage would be roughly $1,379. That's up from $1,209 a little more than a year ago. Uh, when rates hit a record low of 2.65, that's a beautiful number. I locked that in for a, a rental. Uh, you know, so when we talk about factors that influence mortgage rates include, uh, kind of quick breakdown here, you know, the Federal Reserve, the Fed took swift action with the pandemic and hit the United States uh, in March 2020. As we all remember, the Fed announced plans to keep money moving through the economy by dropping the short term federal fund interest rate to between zero and 0.25%, which is as low as they go, folks. Uh, the central bank also pledged to buy mortgage-backed securities. Ooh, remember that? Uh, you know? And uh, treasuries, you know, that's propping up the housing finance market, but began cutting back those purchases in November. And when we talk about um, the 10-year treasury, note, uh, mortgage rates move, you know, in lockstep with the yields on the government 10 year treasury notes. So yields dropped uh, between 1% for the first time in March 2020 and have been, uh, you know, rising since then. So on average, there is typically a 1.8, you know, point spread between, uh, you know, the treasury yields and the benchmark mortgage rates. So Another issue, you know, we, we talk about the broader economy, uh, you know, unemployment rates and changes in gross domestic product are important indicators of overall health of the economy. So when employment and GDP, you know, growth at, at are low, it means the economy is weak, which can push interest rates down. Uh, but, you know, thanks to the pandemic, uh, you know, unemployment levels reached all time highs early last year and have not yet uh, recovered. So GDP also took a hit and while it has bounced back somewhat, somewhat, look between the lines on that, there is still a lot of room for improvement with that. So what seems uh, concerning is the speed with which rates have gone up a little bit. It's a little, gives a little heartburn. Uh, in about, you know, roughly six, seven weeks time, almost a full percentage point, one percentage point, you know, this increase has already started affecting the markets. Look at, uh, this graph case Schiller graph showing that the last three, three rates rose, uh, this, you know, like this, the, the housing market 
slow down dramatically, folks, dramatically. And this is interesting. You take, take an example of, uh, let's say, you know, 300,000, let's say 400,000, $400,000 house. So take a look at this. For example, the payment on a $400,000 loan went from 1,633 to 1,852 on the same house over this period. So, or, you know, an $800,000 loan went from 3,266 to 3,704 for the same house over the past four weeks. Look at this graph. So another way to look at it is, is uh, for the same payment going from 2.75% to 3.7% lowers the mortgage you can afford by almost 100,000 for the same house, folks. So, ouch. So going forward, you know, sellers need to be creative, need to adjust their expectations. When you talk to your sellers, if you're buying, you should look for, you know, Absolutely escrow fallouts. I'm looking at foreclosures across the country. So you need to be patient right now. Don't buy on emotion. When buying, make sure to get a loan rate locked in that makes sense for your transaction. Uh, you know, further, some other points I added, uh, you know, save up money for a sizable down payment. It's easier said than done, I know. Uh, this will lower your loan to value rate, which uh, means how much of the home's price the lender has to Finance. So a lower LTV usually translates to a lower mortgage rate. Absolutely. And lenders also like to uh, see money that has been saved in an account for at least 60 days. That always looks good. Um, you know, it tells the lender you have money to finance uh, the home purchase, you know, and shop around. I'm calling lenders every week. Shop around for the best rate. Don't settle and you can negotiate for the first interest rate that a lender offers you check with at least three different lenders to see who uh, offer, you know, is the lowest interest and have a robust understanding of those rates. When you're talking to the lender, you can talk about other companies. Also consider different types of lenders, such as credit unions. I use credit unions, online lenders. I've used online lenders uh, in addition to traditional banks. So I look at everything. Also take time to find out about different loan types while the 30 year fixed rate mortgage is the most common type of mortgage, consider a short-term loan. So higher payment, like a 15-year loan, adjustable rate mortgage. I did a talk about how I did interest only back in the day, but you have to be smart and make payments on the side. These types of loans offer, you know, often come with a lower rate than a conventional 30-year mortgage. You know, compare the cost of all to see which one best fits your needs and your current financial situation. Don't just assume you got to do a 30. Need That's a myopic way of looking at it. So government loans, such as those backed by the Federal Housing Authority, the Department of Veteran Affairs, and the Department of Agriculture, can be more affordable options for those who qualify. So you do have other options. Finally, lock in that rate, locking your rate once you've found the right rate uh, you know, loan product and lender will help guarantee your mortgage rate won't increase before you close on that loan. I can't emphasize that enough. Don't play games with that. So, you know, the rates have gone up. We knew it was going to happen. If you were following the data, just like inflation, they said was transitory. I've been talking about inflation for a year and a half. It's not transitory. The writing was on the wall with that, but it's really getting out of control worse than 40 plus years. So when you look at, doesn't matter, wages have gone up, but inflation's outpriced wages. And now we got these uh, rate heights in 2022 for a home. So you have to be more creative than ever right now. There's some great buys. I'm not just looking in California. I'm doing a deal right now in Chicago uh, and helping out. And I'm going to get a referral fee off a commercial deal. So you got to be creative right now. I just don't focus on residential in Los Angeles. I'm all over the place uh, looking for stuff and doing stuff. So uh, you got to be creative right now and you got to be on top of this stuff for your clients. It's important, uh, but there are some good buys out there. There are still some good buys out there and uh, it's still a good time to sell. Absolutely. 100%. Um, that's it. Mortgage rates. I'm a little bit in shock right now. I'm looking into the micro data. We'll see how this all pans out. But uh, enjoy the rest of your week. Take care.